One thing we've started talking about in class, but we haven't really gotten to as much in problems, but probably be useful to have a little bit more review on before the exam, and so you have it for the weekend, would be this idea of the relationship between temperature, radius, and luminosity of a star. So let me just review what we covered in class. It's also in the book, but let me just go over the key points first. So remember that what we learned is that for a black body, the luminosity, so that is the power emitted, is equal to the area of the object times this number sigma, the Stefan Boltzmann constant, times the temperature to the fourth power. Okay. So we can write this as for a spherical star, we can rewrite this as 4 pi r squared times sigma times t to the fourth. 4 pi r squared being the surface area of the sphere, sigma again the Stefan Boltzmann constant, and t to the fourth the temperature of the star. But we know that this holds true basically for the sun, so there's an easier way to write this formula that then you can use. So it's like this, and that is that the luminosity is equal to the radius divided by the radius of the sun squared times the temperature divided by the temperature of the sun to the fourth times the luminosity of the sun. And the reason is, is that since I know that this expression here, if I plug in the radius of the sun and the temperature of the sun, I'll get the luminosity of the sun, I can rescale everything to units where it's relative to the sun size. In a similar way to how when we used the um, Kepler's law, we used the mass of the sun as the unit of mass instead of worrying about kilograms. Here we can now, instead of talking about the total wattage output, 4 times 10 to the 26 watts, we can talk about how the wattage compares to that of the sun. So if you tell me how much bigger or smaller the star is relative to the sun, or how much hotter and cooler it is relative to the sun, I now have a simple expression to relate it. So let's consider a couple of, of very simple problems then, or simple examples, that give us a sense of how this then can be used to solve a problem. So let's suppose, for instance, that I have a star, and let's suppose that its radius is twice that of the sun, but its temperature is the same as the sun. Then I know that the luminosity of the star is just equal to 4 times the luminosity of the sun. And the reason why this one is, is that it's the same temperature of the sun, but since its radius is twice as big, the surface area is four times larger, and so it's got four times luminosity. On the other hand, let's consider a different option. Let's imagine a star which is the same size as the sun, but who has a temperature which is 10 times larger than the sun. Sorry, that's not R naught, that's temperature of the sun. Then the luminosity of this star, again, relative to the sun, is equal to, well, it has the same radius as the sun, so it doesn't get any enhancement due to an effective area that's larger, but it is hotter than the sun. So when I plug this into the formula, the radius of the, the suns cancel out, the temperatures of the sun cancel out, but this 10 to the fourth power I get here is 10 to the fourth times L naught, which is of course, 10,000 times the luminosity of the sun. So by having a star which is only 10 times hotter than the sun on its surface temperature, you get something which is 10,000 times more luminous. So this is the expression that you can then use to evaluate as you change the temperature or size of a star, or talk about a star of different temperatures and sizes, whether they should be more or less luminous than other ones. 